Hello, it's Gabe from Prismic. Hi, I'm Gary from Still SCH. So I was wondering, at your company, um, how do you manage um, your technology stack, like Next.js, PipeScript, and um, Storybook? Yes. Storybook. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, there we, um, we're currently replatforming, so we've done a lot of uh, research on different options. Um, one of their most crucial things for us was SEO. Um, so with that being critical, we needed to have server-side rendering. Um, you know, you can do, we believe Google does do rendering of JavaScript for SEO, but which would have been such a critical part of our business. We felt that we weren't taking any chances that we were, we were, we were betting on something that we knew worked. Um, so we looked at some server-side rendering frameworks. Um, we actually implemented a, a beta or alpha version of our own. We then compared that against, um, Next.js and others, and we felt that. Next.js offered everything that we wanted from a framework. Um, it had a great community around it, had some amazing examples in their repository. Um, it, it showed you how to integrate with things like, you know, Jest, TypeScript, Google Analytics, Sentry Error. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's probably 50 or 100 examples in there, which is brilliant. Um, so that's what kind of helped us make the decision on betting on Next.js, I suppose, as our, as our core technology. Right. So uh, what things uh, as a company do you value that Next.js provides? Speed, for example? Yeah. So straight up, straight off, you can start using Next.js without without having to implement a custom node server, for example. They, they, they abstract that away from you. Mm-hmm. But then they also give you the flexibility where, you know, if you have complex caching requirements or authentication, you know, you can you implement your own node server and then you have full control over this which is what what we've had to do um what else they for seo as i said they they have implemented a way that you can inject meta tags into the head and it's mm-hmm. very easy to use and it just gives you an amazing way of managing a page level seo which is another benefit um what else that's not yeah no that, that's great um it's nice that uh you you have kind of this Next.js, Node.js server, um, where you have all the benefits of static, but uh, you have a few other things on top because it's a server. You don't sacrifice anything, really. Um, so with that, how do you use Next.js with your other technologies? Yeah, so, you know, as I mentioned there, we use TypeScript as well. Um, this was an interesting one. I think one of our team members had experience with TypeScript, but the rest would have been new to TypeScript. Um but we just felt from doing research that and speaking to people at conferences that, you know, it was a strong, a strong language, um, but it offered, if you write your application in this and our components, that it would scale well and it was, it was a bit easier to onboard uh, new developers. Um, so far, I think we've seen a lot of benefits. Um, there is like getting used to TypeScript, fighting with TypeScript errors, but... I wouldn't call it pain. You know, it's just part of the learning process, and we're, it's definitely saved. I found myself saying, "Oh, thankfully TypeScript there." That was like a three-hour bug to figure out when I tried to do uh, an incorrect uh, check. You know. Okay, so it seems to benefit you a lot. What about sometimes people ask about the case where you have to just put in any type in TypeScript, like from an API response? How is that handled? Yeah, I suppose we have a couple of rules turned on, so no implicit any. So like, you can't just write a function without actually declaring the type for the parameter but you can just cheat and kind of add any um i'm not gonna lie we have a couple of instances where we use any but you know the majority of the time we're, we're trying our best to to add the types um and in some cases there's been instances where we just have to kind of implement something and figure out because we're all learning typescript figure out how the types work and do a bit of research and that's working well mm-hmm. so the next time we tackle that problem you know we're able to type it from the start i suppose which is probably the proper way of doing it that's nice. So, uh, onto the other topic, storybook. Yeah. Um, how is that working out? Yeah, I think um, what we what we tried to do from the start was um, component driven development. You could say. So we look at a say a design or a page, mm-hmm. and we break it down into components. And what we do is we we take the UI components from that, and we try to we would then look at the requirements for that. We would start in Storybook JS, um, which gives you a nice UI. You'd, you'd start coding your component so you're referencing the benefit is you're, you you write your component in your production folder in your actual a- application mm-hmm. and Storybook.js lives alongside of this 
So you reference your actual component in Storybook. You render it to Storybook's UI. You then you know, define the, the prop types for it, uh, pass in mock data if you want, and then you style this component. You can change the viewport in Storybook with a plugin. So then you have your responsive component coded, and then you publish it or you push the production from here. And it's just a matter of yourself or another team picking up this component and using it. But the benefit is if there's a bug fix that comes in on the site, you make that bug fix, but it then flows through the storybook. Mm-hmm. So it's not this decoupled style guide or component library. It's actually your live live components that are getting updated, right. uh, which is brilliant. Very cool. So thank you for sharing, Gary. No and problem. it was nice having you. Thanks very much.